Hi, hope you can join me. We're gonna paint this cupcake. It's fast, it's easy and fun, and I'm gonna teach some shading and some other techniques. So get your paints, come on. Okay, so hopefully if you guys are painting along, you've got a piece of paper or a canvas or a board to paint on, and you've got your golden acrylics or whatever paints you are using. I'm only using these three golden colors, benzamidazidone yellow medium, phthalo blue, green shade. There's a red shade and a green shade. I like the green shade better. You can use either. And quinacridone magenta for our red. And then white or tinting. And I don't use black and I'll show you why. But I thought we would tackle this because it's got some nice shadows and I wanted to go over something that I feel like we all kind of want tend to want to do. So I'm going to mix my paints right here so you can see them. Um, I normally use a palette pad, you know, like the wax paper. Make sure you have some water nearby to clean your brushes. But using this um, magenta gives us a little bit more variation of purples that we can make. So, hopefully you can see this. So, for starters, what I wanted to say is that we tend to want to paint things in by a category of subject matter. Like our brain most often would say, I wanna paint this paper, so I'm just gonna paint hot pink down here. Or I'm gonna paint this icing, and I'm just gonna paint a yellowy kind of off-white. When in reality, this color right here, the shaded color is very, very different from this highlighted color. So what I wanna do is paint by a section of colorway. So I'm thinking we're gonna start right here in this shaded part of the cupcake paper. So to start with that, we wanna get some magenta, get, make it a little pile, and then add a little bit of yellow. And what paintbrush are you using for this first part? Um, for this, um, this is just an angled one quarter inch. Look at that. But you could use any brush you want. It's sort of, that's sort of personal preference. When I'm sitting down, I tend to use the short brushes. When I'm standing up, I like to use long ones. Put a touch of the blue in there to give it the shading, but be careful that that blue goes so far and you can always add more, but it's real hard to take it out. So just put a touch to start off with. I'm talking like a, a tiny touch to make sort of this dark shaded deep hot pink color so you want we're going for this color in here okay. and then the other thing let me lower this light the other thing that we don't do often enough is slow down and look we let our mind make assumptions on how things look you know what i mean like take a second <laughs> My daughter's painting with us, so just, she just reached over to see that her color. It is. Yeah. Let, let's just trust, because the people at home can't do that. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once you get this nice shaded color, mine actually might be, I'm talking about this shape right here. So let's slow down and look at it. It looks like, almost like a leaf shape. And then, as far as the whole cupcake goes, from tip of flame to the bottom, Let's say this is halfway. It's maybe, maybe a third of the way. So kind of look at your space. And let's say it's gonna be, it's rounded at the top. And then it goes down to a nice thin point. And see mine is actually a little dark. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a little white and a little more magenta, because I made it a little too dark. I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. So then if we really look, pay attention, look at the edge of the cupcake paper. It's got a nice little And it starts to go up. So 
I don't, you don't have to do all, all of that. But so notice where is the next, so then there's a highlight and there's a medium light and the next thing comes down kind of over here. What do I do if I made my paint too bright, light pink? Um, How do I bring it darker again? Well, it'll take a lot of paint. You can keep adding in magenta and then a touch of blue and a little more yellow, or you can start over and save that for your medium tone. Oh. So you see, as we go around, it looks like the darkest magenta color is over here and in these shaded portions. But as we go over here, there's some shading, but it's a little bit brighter. So it's all kind of relative to what's next to it. So we're gonna do these. Then, so as I'll look right next to your dark portions are these light portions. And they're a little bit warmer too. So I'm gonna put magenta and a little more yellow that I mixed on that one and make it a little bit more tinted, which means adding more white. So th these light changes are all caused by shadows. Shadows, I think, can be, they seem kind of intimidating, but they're really not. So I'm gonna take this lighter color that meets right at the peak and it's kind of the opposite. See how the lighter color, if you slow down and look, the lighter color is wider at the bottom and more narrow at the top, which I, my brain kind of made the assumption that it would follow the same shape as the thing, but it didn't. And I'm also noticing that there's some highlights that go along this little squiggle line. So basically, ultimately, we're gonna have a shade, a dark version of the hot pink, a medium, a light, and then maybe a super highlight. And kind of keep them all mixed at the same time. Mm -hmm. We might wanna get a pointed brush for this. But so if I just keep going and start making stripes, then it will stop looking real because it changes as you go around the corner. The hot, see how the highlighted part gets thinner? And the shape of the cupcake goes up the hill. So it gets shorter and thinner. And then it also kind of sticks out. So I guess what I'm saying is slow down and, and look before you put your brush down. Just slow down and look because all the information you need is right here if you're painting, if your goal is to paint realistically. Now, I'm not saying realistic should be your goal. I think it's fun when you let it rip and see what reality is and then put it on the paper the way you want to and have fun with it. But a lot of people want to learn how to paint realistically. It seems to be a normal phase or part of the natural evolution of an artist. What happens if I did it too fast and now I want to undo it? Should I wipe it off with a paper towel? Or paint over it with more green? You know what? So my daughter wants to wipe it off. What well, Y'all heard that question. Yeah. What I would love for you to do is just to play with the color and put some more highlights. Do the light color. Go in there and see if you can okay. do it. And then we can correct it with the green because it's so easy. And folks at home, I've done this a million times where you get frustrated and you just toss the whole painting. But sometimes if you keep working it, you either learn something or you have fun or you, you know what I'm saying? Before you toss it, go a little bit further and adjust, like adjust the way you feel about it. Ooh, Does okay. that make sense? Now, there are sometimes you guys saw me light that painting on fire there's sometimes where you can keep working it and not get anywhere but it'll help you with the redo if you keep get in there and try to like kind of mess with the okay so then look over here look how the top the little bumps 
on this paper. So I'm gonna take the dark color It's so, I really do feel like half the battle is your feelings towards your art. Because if you're frustrated, and you know this though, if you're frustrated, you're, you can't make any art. So you gotta like sometimes stop and find something you like about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you know that artist, and I feel embarrassed that I don't know how to pronounce his name, Basquiat? Mm -hmm. Is it Basquiat or Basquiat? Basquiat, you said it right. Like, do you think he sits around and is like, is my cupcake perfect? No, he plays like a kid and he, and he makes his cupcake bold and original. So I'd also, like right now, I absolutely love your cupcake and I know you feel frustrated. No, I, I like can, it. I can't, okay, good. I was asking questions for the audience. Oh, cool. I actually know everything about art, and I'm here to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody's BS detector going off at home? Okay. Is anyone watching? Can you tell? Oh, I don't know. Not, I don't know if they are yet. I think they're at work. Anybody? Oh! Hi, there are some people already watching. I thought usually they watch the lives later. Thanks for watching. Hope you're painting. Okay, what do you think? It looks like the inside of this cupcake paper is silver, so it's reflecting back cupcake color. Isn't that fun? So just keep looking. Like I made this shaded color too dark. Don't be a perfectionist. Be an artist. Be wild and willy. So then, like, I'm gonna stop and look. What's going on over here? It's a little more, the cupcake is a little more, uh, like, I don't know what you call it, like it blossoms more out towards, well, how would you say that? Um. And I, this is what I am totally guilty of. I get lazy and wanna use the same color for everything. Instead of stopping and being like, does that actually need a cooler version? Okay, this part's hard for me. The little cupcake's going up around the corner. Okay. Yeah, same. No, but if you look at your neighbors, like, those look so cool. Pick your, yeah, pick yours up. Like, look at Zell's. That's my daughter. I love how purple yours is. Is it on there? So keep going because this is actually going to be a fabulous painting. The shape is kind of wacky. The shape is kind of wacky, but I kind of like it. Yeah. If you're having fun and being bold, it shows up in your art. And it's then it's more Basquiat than uptight person freaking out. Not that there's anything wrong with uptight people. Sorry, first forms. You're the least, actually, of all the firstborns of my entire existence. You're the least uptight. But you are a firstborn. Okay, so then you find, over here, I found like these little points. So just keep looking and being like, okay, where's mine? All right, my shape is a little wacky too. And sometimes, so these shadow parts that are actually inside the paper over here, instead of black, I, may, I mix a, a neutral, which is all three primaries mixed almost equally in, in equal proportions. If you mix all three of them equally, you will get a really nice, at this and the reason these three colors are so fabulous is because they're very transparent they let the light through so they don't make 
mud as easy. They, I don't think they make mud at all. But look at this color. This is not black, but in a painting, come next to other colors, it's going to show up as black. It's gonna, it's better than black. It's equal parts? Equal parts of all three to make a really dark neutral. And, and then, we don't have any gray in here, but watch what happens when you add white just for later paintings. You make these fabulous luminous grays. And then you realize when you add white, okay, it's kind of purple. So if you want it to be really neutral, you add the, its opposite. And the opposite of purple is yellow. So you can make, you can get down to these grays that have the most subtle differences. And that really has an impact on your, your color palette. It just will make it be much more refined, more kind of, I don't know, we're gonna do a class. Let's do a class where we just make grays because it's amazing what you can do. So instead of this color, these little bumpies to me look like they should be. So are we using gray instead of black? Right, I mean, I just put a teensy, teensy, tiny bit of white. Okay, also way down here where the cupcake meets the table, so that's another place to use this very deep, nice neutral. And then you might add a little, just a little. Okay, okay, but here, actually see how the shadow is on the green? We'll do that last. You know what? Completely ignore that, we're gonna do that last. So in here, around these bumpy things, I need to go back and do my magenta. Okay, so I'm making another, over here, it's kind of a medium deepish magenta. So when people will be like, what color is it? It doesn't matter, it just matters what it's sitting next to. So mix it. You know, like you can look at this color right here in the deepest part, and then the one next to it is to see how much brighter it is. And like mine's a little much. But that way, it's just relative to what is next to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But you see what I'm saying? If you slow down and look, like you can, I remember just feeling like, I don't know how to paint a reflection in the window. Well, everything is shape and line, right? Yeah. Like I just use my brain and assume there was a straight line all, all the way down. That is not how it is at all. So I need to stop and look again. Oh, and then one of these things is lower. Is the brightest highlight and the darkest shadow, are they always next to each other? Is that how that works? Or that's how it works in makeup, so I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, th I believe so. Oh, well. Do because usually the highest point of where the, so shadow is determined by the quality of the light the color of the light, and then the object that is casting the shadow. And if you start paying attention to shadows, it's kind of fun, because there's the self-shadow, the, what are the other things? I'm gonna have to Google that one. I have no idea. Okay, I am gonna start mixing the yellow of the cupcake. So, take a minute to notice, look over here, the actual cake part, is this making you hungry, by the way? Versus over here, where the bright light is on it, how much yellower. So your mind might want to assume, okay, I'm gonna paint the whole thing one color yellow when we get when we get lazy. So instead, I want you to mix up a dark yellow over here and paint that shape, and then paint this one. That's the thing I was gonna mention earlier. Sorry, my ADD is off the charts this week. What do I do if I run out of space on my painting palette? Um, you haven't at all. You okay. have this space and this space and this space and this space and this and this and this and this. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take yellow and then tone it down. You put the other two colors in. 
the blue really goes far in the yellow. So I'm trying to make the color of the sh most shaded part of the icing way over, I mean of the actual, what do you call the, it's the cake, right? The cake. The cake. cake. The cake of the cup. So. Oh. So you're starting by making it darker and then move it up. What I'm seeing is your brain sometimes gets kind of lazy and wants to paint, oh, this is yellow and do the whole thing yellow, when this is a significantly different color in the shaded regions than it is over here. So I'm gonna paint that area. So how did you mix this yellow today? So I start with yellow and then add just the tiniest bits of blue and magenta. That blue goes so far. And then to make the highlight, I'm going to put either more yellow and a little bit of white. White just tents it, just brightens it up. And then if you mix, if you do these two yellows, the bright, well-lit one over here on the right, before this one dries, then you can kind of blend it while it's wet. And then it's a little bit easier to make the transition. Acrylic dries so fast, which what I love about it. Do you want to talk about using water in your acrylics or do you never do that? You know, I usually don't, but you could if you wanted to thin it down and make That's it a little I've more. Been doing, and I've been really enjoying it. You can always add some water. Hmm. Right now I'm stuck on this orange color trying to get to... Okay, so Zell's color has gotten... Let's see it. Zell's is trying to mix a yellow and has made this color. Okay, so when you look at it, what does it have too much of? Too much yellow and orange. So too much magenta. Well, is it... Do you want it to... What do you want it to be more of? More yellow, right? I want it to be darker. Well, right now it's got... To me, I feel like it has too much red. Okay. So I would actually start over because it would take so much yellow to dilute out that red. Okay. And it, mixing colors all, it's, it's just practice. Keep looking at things and just matching them because the more you do it, the more, the easier it gets. Okay, also there's one little blue. Look at the little blue. What do we call that thing? Icing? No, no, no. Decor? What do you call the little? The wrapper? No, the little, that. Sprinkle? Sprinkle. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I can think of that word. <laughs> the cupcake decor. <laughs> <laughs> the cupcake window treatments. Is this? This is what I love doing. Okay, even on this little teeny sprinkle, I'm going to do the medium blue. There is going to be a shadow, which would be... The light source is coming from over here. I don't know if y'all can tell. Because you can barely see the icing. But even on this little sprinkle, the shadow is going to be back here. And then there's also going to be a little shadow on the cake. So everything, every object in this around this cupcake is going to have highlights, shadows, and and it just, every time you go in and add the detail, it's going to give it more dimension. Wait till you see the, wait till you see it with the, shat, the highlight on the sprinkle. But look at that. Do you see that dimension I just gave that? Ooh. Because yeah. it has... I'm still stuck on the cake, though. So. Okay. Well, you're not stuck, so... Or I'm still working on the I'm cake. still enjoying mixing the colors and rendering the cake. Now, stop. Are you having fun? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Did you... 
it's sort of an active meditation when you're painting. If you lose track of time and you get caught up is I keep in what you're doing. But if you are criticizing your drying, painting. So I gotta go quicker. Oh, okay. I want your arm in the paint. Okay. Okay. So but yeah, now I'm thinking we're gonna do the same thing, except for you know what? I'm gonna go in and add this little highlight. Just give it some dimension. Dang, now this just looks green. I don't know how to mix. Well, now it's just practice, so that does not. That actually looks like a nice deep yellow. Ooh, okay. okay, that is what I don't want you to do. See that paintbrush over there? That well, because I'm not done with that one. Yet. I know, but okay. you can never leave them out. Because never do this. Never leave a paintbrush out because it will dry so fast and ruin your paintbrush. paintbrush. If you have example. to just set it down, just stick it in your water. Don't, oh, you did, oh. Yeah. Wasn't that thoughtful? She did that on purpose. You're welcome. You're so helpful. <laughs> she's been, she's been leaving examples around her room all weekend. What not to do. But no, yeah, I let my paintbrush up to someone one time and they handed it back completely yeah. <laughs> solid. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah. Okay, so the icing. Oh, wait, I like your color better. What I want to do with the icing, guys, is I want to paint it in shapes and color shapes. Like, I want to paint a big white piece over here and then paint this neutrally color. And this might, it might be challenging, but I think you're going to do great. It's just a matter of just keep looking. So, look at this color. This, to me, is a nice warm off-white. There's a, a deep yellow in here that looks about the same color of the cupcake. Then these nice kind of grays over here. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with this. No, no, I'm gonna start with this piece down here. So what I'm gonna do is start with white. Oops. Wait, I think you should slow down for your viewers. You do? Just cause I'm still working on the cake. Okay. Or well, I guess they can fast forward when they watch it. They can also rewind. I don't wanna make the video too long, so true. Too, too long and I feel like Okay. If yeah. you are still working on your cake, hit pause. True. Um, I don't want to rush you, but I also don't want to make it so long if there are people no, zipping true. on through. Because then you can just keep re-explaining it as you paint the icing. Well, and I kind of like to try to move around. And I, I do paint fast. I've been painting for... So, are you available to do math for me? <laughs> yes. Last time I did this, I did the math wrong. I had all these people comment. So, I am, as of... Ooh, as of a few days ago. As of two days ago, I'm 50... Three Woo! and I have been painting since I want to say uh, I mean as my all-time favorite thing to do since I was about eleven I would say how long have I been painting and if you people at home know the answer please shout out you have been painting for forty-two years that's amazing gosh I don't feel old enough to have done anything. 42 years okay back to the icing so I'm gonna try to mix this color and it's it's kind of gray but it's a little bit warm but see how it's cooler than this highlight right next to it so I'm gonna use some of this neutral I mixed earlier and add a teeny bit of yellow to it because I just want it to be see how that's kind of and if you're not sure y'all can't do this at home but sometimes I just paint right on the photo to see how close I am to the color. So I'm going to take this color and see it's a little light. It's showing up. So I'm going to add a little more of my neutral and just keep playing with it because you can, that wonderful thing about acrylics is they're very forgiving. You can paint right over them. If you're doing some of those sheer ass watercolors that drive you crazy because you got one shot at it. This color works for me. So see how it's a luminous gray. I love these paints. Is it bad to mix paints with your fingers? Um, I would not. These, while they are, um, I don't think they're, cons I don't think you should get them, like, eat them or keep them in your skin or, you know, do stuff like that. So you see how this icing is just like, it's like flower shapes. But you know, that looks a little too purple. So I'm gonna add a little yellow. 
and a lot more white for the transition color, which is sort of the middle ground. See how it are, it's already kind of got that ribbony. icing on like you're actually putting icing on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then we can always go back in and... And how are you making this gray? With a black first? Or you just start with the white and um, I just use all three of the colors and then make it that dark color and then I added a, that to a bunch of white with just a little more yellow. Does that make sense? So you, this... Oh, okay, okay. I think so. That makes a lot of sense. So this is your, so mix all three, but see like in here, there are these yellows. So I'm going to start with yellow instead of using the neutral. Oh, but I got a little blue in there. Can you see all the way down here? Oops. Ran out of mixing room. And keep looking at your color. You know, that turns sort of lime green on me. That is not what I'm looking at. Like up here, it's kind of a creamy pink. Right here, it's yellow. And it's got a sprinkle in it. How'd you start that first row? Um, well, just look at the picture. Hold on. Yeah, and then do, and see how it's kind of in leafy, sticking over the edge shapes? Yeah. And then, at some point when we do this candle, we gotta do a different color because the lime green's not gonna show up on this lime green. True. What color candle should we do? I think we should do bright Purple. blue. Uh. Okay, there's also some dark tones in here that I need to add in. They're very warm. So I usually just kind of find colors on my palette because I'm used to. But the more you mix colors, excuse me, hiccup, the easier it gets. But also like the icing is not perfect. It's not photo real, but I like what's happening. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's find your Basquiat and let it go, rip it. Everybody's homework. Oh, I get to give homework because I'm teaching. <laughs> homework assignment and you have to do it. So. Okay. Everyone else at home, the teacher's talking. Okay, the power has gone to my head. Sorry, I gotta settle down. But I'm giving homework. I want everybody to go look up some, your, some Basquiat paintings. And if you don't like them, go find another very free, very bold artist. He's just one of my favorites. In fact, I might run upstairs and get a book and we can look at them. Because I have a feeling you two people might not take homework seriously. So see how that is. And I think it needs to be a little warmer. So I'm going to add more yellow. Oh, whoa. Yours looks so good. Okay, wait. So does yours. Okay, but so do you see what happened? So Let's, how did you do it? Let me look at yours. Let me show you what happened. Yeah, I just did one color. You got you got a little bit lacy and did one color, and that's okay. So I thought it would just like show up if I textured it. That's interesting. Well, that's okay. What I'm saying is slow down. Okay. And that, but you have a great background for it. Now you're ready. So okay. look how different, Zell, this color is. Mix that one and paint that little shape. Okay. Compared to this one. I mean, that is very, very different. Okay. So find a dark one and paint it up near the edge. So anyway, if you need your neutral to be warmer, you add more yellow and red. Temperature is all relative. And it does take practice. I still brick and mix weird colors when I'm trying, like right then I was trying to make a shadow. Well, actually I like that. 
Keep looking. Keep slowing down. I still mess up. Actually, I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounded obnoxious. <laughs> You're right. I still, I totally bricked. Actually, no, I didn't. Um, Y'all saw me burn the painting. It happens. All 25 of you saw it. Oh my God, a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Richard. Okay. Okay, I'm also, the really fun part, there's so many fun parts, it's all fun, is when you do like a super highlight, and we rarely do this, I need more paint. Restraint is not my strong suit, but I'm learning. So when you do feel like you got your icing, you got it going on, and don't do this too heavy handedly or else your painting will be really bright and give you a headache. But just for a highlight, use a pure hue, which means straight out of the tube, add a dot of pure yellow and mix it with a bunch of white. And because you've mixed all your other colors, which are, it's your very mature palette, this will really pop when you do this. And just use it sparingly like. But see how that popped? Makes it look like a really bright highlight. And like there might be one way over here. Sparingly, sparingly. So Zell, so, don't do it too even. Mix one color. You know what I'm saying? Like your brain just said, okay, this is what the highlights look like. So there's, if you really look at this, this is a very warm yellow shadow. Oh yeah. This is a gray purple shadow. Really slow down and look. Mm -hmm. But all that matters is that you're having fun. Okay, so we critique, we critique this that we've got so far. So what happens is... Looks like I'm just kind of randomly guessing, which I am. You are. You're not slowing down and looking. That's all that's happening is that you haven't slowed down. and You've used the same purple here, 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 and here. Yeah. When in actuality, this, is, this shadow is very yellow. This one's very purple. This one's a little more yellow, deep yellow. You know, see what I mean? Just keep slowing down and looking at the photo. Nice. And then the really fun thing is to take, to do the sprinkles, mix a pretty bright, just use a touch of the other three, teeny bit of white. Basically you're getting a hot pink. little nook. Do a round little sprinkle. And then, this is the fun part, then you mix a neutral, a very dark magenta for the shaded part on the back side. And you need a sharp brush for this, for your little sprinkle shadows. So basically, I don't know if you can see it. Let's, I'm going to do a sprinkle, but I'm going to do it right here so y'all can see it. Does that, does that work? So get some magenta. Here's the magenta I'm using. Add a little bit of white, a teeny bit of yellow, just so it's not, if everything is always toned down a little bit, then when you do your jewel tones, when you do your highlights, it'll really pop. I've been working on restraint my whole life. I mean, look at me, I wear stuff like this. Restraint. It's, it's challenging. It's a challenge. Okay, so I'm getting a very pointy brush. Like this. A really sharp brush. And I'm going to make a sprinkle right here. I'm just going to do it bigger so y'all can see. Can so I white paint? I'm going to do like a medium tone sprinkle. And make it... It doesn't have to be perfectly round because some of the icing would be blocked. What do you need? White? I think... I don't know. My favorite thing, well, one of my favorite things about art is how different everybody's palette looks. Look at Zell's palette, isn't it fabulous? Like her sixth grade headmaster said, she doesn't think outside the box, she lives outside the box. But everybody's palette is very different, and I love that. Okay, so we did, this is just an enlarged sprinkle. 
Can y'all see that? So then we're gonna take some magenta or we're using it. And then we're gonna add a little blue and a little yellow to make it dark. But it's still magenta. It's just a very nice shaded version. And then watch this. Oh, we need to show them. We need to do a video of the spray paint circles. Yeah, true. I agree. We saw the coolest video we want to try. So then you have that. And then clean your brush, get some magenta, and tint it with some white. So see how that gave that dimension? But we're doing it on a teeny tiny scale. And believe it or not, it, you can really, it really comes across in a painting when you give depth to even the little tiniest little things like, I need to put my glasses on. Okay, and sometimes if you are feeling frustrated with one area, like I actually think your icing's looking good. If you are frustrated, stop and go to a different area that you haven't tackled in a while and let it sit there because then when you see it with fresh eyes, you might not be as hard on it. But look at all the colors we've made with those three colors. Think how much money you save. I used to just buy, you know, get lime green and all these different things that was not necessary well it still works um these three colors and you got your travel studio these three colors in white for tinting you don't need black you need a little a few brushes so keep looking around like look at your painting and then look at the photo like i just noticed there's some little highlights right here and every little bit adds Needed to have a highlight. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, let's do the candle. Do you want to move to the candle? I'm thinking a blue candle just so it'll show up against this green because, and like everything, y'all, it's going to have a shadow, a highlight. So I like to start with the medium. Can you see it? I keep that. Take it off. I like to start with sort of a mid-tone, and I don't ever, that's not true, I don't often use straight out of the tube pure hue. Now, I would say 98% of the time I am toning down a color, meaning I'm mixing, I'm using all three colors to some proportion. It might just be a tiny bit, but I'm going to start with a middle, a medium blue that's got a little bit of white in it for my candle. And the cool thing is, so the candle is not going to be visible all the way through it. And it's not centered. If I were going to put my candle, is it centered? I guess so. What were you going to say if it wasn't centered? I can tell you had to I was going to make it fatter. But that would look weird. Okay, so now it just looks flat, right? Let's add dimension. So I'm gonna mix a similar color, but brighter, meaning less neutral, ne less toned down. When I say toned down, I mean adding the other two colors. Whenever I do this, it makes me wanna teach a whole color class. That's what I'm gonna do next. Remember on Instagram, were you there for when we did the one? We did one whole class where we would say, I would go UPS Brown, mix that. And then I would say blood, and people would mix blood. Goldfish orange, grass, just to practice. It's so fun. Yeah, it was, it actually was. It, I think it was fun. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so now for the shadow, we're toning it down. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that means less white and less of the other 
I mean, more of the other two colors. So like fully toned down would be all three equally would be that black color. Yeah. So the in between is the shady colors. It still looks blue, but it looks like a shaded version. And so this side, And then I like to use that full neutral color. Do you think the wick, I can't ever tell, are wicks usually white or black? Oh, uh, they start out white and then they burn. So it's kind of black up here? Yeah. And then it usually has like that white hot orange. So just take straight yellow and magenta. More yellow than anything. Okay, you cannot, you guys cannot see the candle in the picture. So I'm gonna get another picture of a flame that we can work with. Or just Google on your phone, lit candle. yellowy soft light the HP MV Pro yes well, look at that it is hard to make up I have, I have trouble painting things from my imagination because we have all these assumptions of what they look like. It's usually kind of more neutral and hotter at the bottom. That just <laughs> that looks terrible. Look at that. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Alright, well we're gonna get we're gonna get a picture. Um if you have any requests for things that we should paint together please put that in the comments if this was too easy too difficult i'd love to hear from you hopefully this photo of a flame will help us when i paint something for the first time i usually use house paint as the background because it makes it easier if you mess up but it's also a good practice to remix the color if you used a mix, you know, if you made your background color. I didn't realize it had a dark background. Because it wanted to use all your ink, so I yanked it out halfway through. Oh. Oh, nice. Okay. So it's really got a little orange. What would you call that? Like a halo? Yeah. And it's sort of blue right around the wick. And then real white at the tip. There's some, anything that you think, like, like I just, in my mind, thought I knew what a candle looked like lit, but I didn't. So always stop and look. It's funny, like when I go teach in schools, sometimes I'm gonna paint with little kids, like second graders, and I'll ask them what color clouds are. And they're all like, white. And then I tell them to put their hand binoculars on and look outside. And they're usually gray. They're sometimes pink. They even will have some green in them, some purple. What? Never seen a green cloud. I'll show you a picture. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying grass green. I'm just saying, like, think about a stormy day. I feel like the shadows will be purple. All right, green is not as common. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nice so having a little lion to kindergartners. I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying <laughs> that there are all kinds of colors in there. 
All right, I'm gonna find a picture of a green cloud. <laughs> so it's neutrally down here. What? <laughs> I'm gonna your channel and argue with you. And then it looks like it's very white. Do you use out of the tube white for fire? Yeah, I am a little bit. Okay. But I'm gonna do an orange. I feel like there's a special word for the the light around. You know that orange? Yeah. Uh, Is there a no. special fire word? Like, I want it to be special -er. You know, like parabola or something. Okay. <laughs> the, the numensa, which is the orange glow around a flame. Mm. Have you ever heard of the numen numensia? Mm. Bebop? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then clean up with these acrylics is very easy. Water. It's another reason that I don't paint with oils. They take too long to dry. They have the cleanup is can be very toxic. Maybe they have invented oil painting cleanup that is not toxic, but I don't know about it. Okay, I think we're finished. Ooh. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. And send us a picture of what you're painting or who you're painting with or what you're up to. Because we love seeing what you're doing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Oh, wait. Do you want to see Zell's? Oh, yeah. Can we show yours real quick? I'm not, I haven't added sprinkles yet, but this is pretty much it. Oh, the sprinkles are going to be so fun. Oh, I'm loving it. Thank you for joining me. Here's Zell's. I love, we could frame them all together. Aww. All right, y'all have a great day. Thanks.